So we have an electric dipole, which is basically a positive and negative charge of equal magnitude separated by a distance d. And a line is drawn from the center of that electric dipole to a point in space that we call point P. And our job is to calculate the electric potential at that point. Now, it's important to understand that in this case, we are asked to calculate the electric potential along the axis of the dipole. So this axis right here that's been labeled Z, that's the axis of the dipole. And since we're trying to calculate the electric potential along that axis, we actually have to imagine that point P is shifted onto that dipole axis. So you actually want to imagine point P is located right here. But you'll notice as we swing point P onto the dipole axis, this angle right here between that line and the dipole axis, that angle would collapse or shrink to a value of zero. So it's important to understand in this question that theta is going to equal zero degrees. And the theta shows up in this equation right here. This gives us the electric potential of an electric dipole at a certain distance. Now we have this value one over four pi epsilon. It's usually more convenient to write that as the constant k. So we're going to be doing that in this case. And this will be times p, which is the electric dipole moment times the cosine of the angle of which we've already spoken divided by a distance squared. So what we're going to do is just plug in the known values. We know that k, for example, is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. That's newton meters squared per coulomb squared multiplied by p, which again is the electric dipole moment. Now that was given as 1.47 debye's, but debye's is not a standard unit. We are told that one debye is this value right here. So basically what you have to do is take your 1.47 debye's, but then multiply that by that little conversion factor, which is one debye is equal to 3.34 times 10 to the minus 30, and that is coulomb meters. And when you set it up in this fashion, the debye's will cancel out, times the cosine of the angle, which again is zero degrees, and then this is all divided by the distance given squared. The distance here is 52 nanometers. Don't forget that because it's in nanometers, you have to multiply that by 10 to the minus nine in order to convert it into the standard unit of meters, and then don't forget to square it as well. So you'll go ahead and you'll pick up your calculator. You'll make sure you are in degree mode, or more simply, the cosine of zero is just one, so you actually don't need to type it in. And when you punch this all in, you're gonna get about 1.63 times 10 to the minus five. And of course, the standard unit of electric potential is volts. So this would be the correct answer to the question.